Hello guys! So today's video, we will be discussing about the assessment in effective domain. At the end of this lesson, students should be able to First, define the different concepts related to assessing effective domain. Second, describe the different levels of effective domain. Third, explain the effective domain learning competencies. Fourth, discuss the three focal concepts in the effective domain. Fifth, explain and illustrate the motivation theories. And lastly, describe the interaction of the three concepts, which are the self-concept, self-esteem, and self-efficacy. What is Affective Domain? The Affective Domain is one of the three domains in Bloom's taxonomy, with the other two being the Cognitive and the Psychomotor. The Affective Domain includes the manner in which deal with things emotionally, such as feelings, values, appreciation, enthusiasms, motivations, and attitudes. Affective learning is demonstrated by behaviors indicating attitudes of awareness, interest, attention, concern, responsibility, ability to listen, and respond in interactions with others. It also includes the ability to demonstrate those attitudinal characteristics or values which are appropriate to the test situation and the field of study. The Affective Domain is a part of a system that was published in 1965 for identifying, understanding, and adjusting on how people learn. This domain describes learning objectives that emphasize a feeling tone, an emotion, or a degree of acceptance or rejection. It is admittedly a form more difficult to objectively analyze and assess since effective objectives vary from simple to selective phenomena to complex. But, internally consistent qualities of character and conscience. Nevertheless, much of the educative process need to deal with assessment and measurement of the domain. For instance, it is more often heard that certain people are schooled but not educated. This cliché simply refers to the fact that much of the process in the education today are aimed at developing the cognitive aspects of development and very little or no time is spent in development of the effective domain. The Effective Traits According to Ha 1995, as cited by Macmillan 2001, the term effective refers to the wide variety of traits and disposition that are different from knowledge, reasoning, and skills. In the table presented, we can see the different traits and its definition. Effective Domain Learning Competences Effective learning competences are often stated in form of instructional objectives. What? then are educational objectives. So first, instructional objectives are specific, measurable, short-term, and observable students' behavior. So next is, objectives are the foundation upon which you can build lessons and assessments that you can prove that you met your overall course or lesson goals. And the last one is Think of objectives as tools you use to make sure you reach your goals. They are arrows you shoot towards your target or goal. Focal concepts in the affective domain. So the first is attitudes are defined as a mental predisposition to act that is expressed by evaluating a particular entity with some degree of favor and disfavor. It has four components. And the first is 
Cognitions. Cognition are our beliefs, theories, and expectances. Cause and effects belief and perception relative to the focal object. This concept is not the same with feelings, but just a statement of beliefs and expectations which vary from one individual to the next. And the second is affect. The affective component refers to our feelings with respect to the focal object, such as fear, liking, or anger. For instance, the color blue evokes different feelings for different individuals. Some like color blue, but others do not. Some associate the color blue with loneliness, while others associate it with calm and peace. And the third is Behavioral Intention Behavioral intention are our goals, aspirations, and our expected responses to the attitude object. And the last but not the least, Evaluation Evaluation are often considered the central component of attitude. Evaluation consists of the imputation of some degree of goodness or badness to an attitude object. When we speak of a positive or negative attitude toward an object, we are referring to the evaluative component. So evaluations are function of cognitive, affect, and behavioral intentions of the object. For instance, Think about your attitudes towards drinking alcohol beverages, or gambling, or going on all-night bar, hoping spree every night. Attitude, Opinion, and Belief An opinion is generally the expression of one's judgment of a particular set of facts or an evaluation of the circumstances presented to it. Thorstone defines opinions as expression of attitudes. However, Kulasa observes that an opinion responds to a specifically limited stimulus, but the response is certainly influenced by the predisposition with which the individual is operating that is the attitude structure. Although attitude tends to be generalized predisposition to react in some way towards objects or concepts, Opinions tend to be focused on more specific aspects of the objects or the concept. McCorn, Meek, and Tiffen observe that the measurement of attitude is generally based on the expressions of opinions. The difference can be made between attitude and belief. A belief is an enduring organization of perception and cognitions about some aspects of individual's world. Thus, belief is a hypothesis concerning the nature of objects, more particularly concerning one's judgment of the probability regarding their nature. In this sense, belief is the cognitive component of attitude which reflects the manner in which an object is perceived. Colossa observes that beliefs are stronger than opinions. We hold them more firmly than we do the more changeable evaluations of minor or transitory events represented by opinions. Why study attitude? Obviously, attitude can influence the way we act and think in the social communities we belong. They can function as frameworks and references for forming conclusions and interpreting or acting for or against the individual, a concept or idea. Thus, attitudes may influence behavior. People who behave in ways consist with their attitudes. Number two, motivation. Motivation is a reason or set of reasons for engaging in a particular behavior, especially human behavior. The reason may include basic needs, example, food, water, shelter, or an object, goal, a state, being, or ideal that is desirable, which may or may not be viewed as positive such as a state of being in which pain is the theory of absence.
Motivation for a behavior may also be attributed to the less apparent reasons such as altruism or morality. According to Green, motivation refers to the initiation, direction, intensity, and persistence of human behavior. There are many theories that explain human motivation. The need theory is one of these theories. Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs theory is the most widely discussed theory of motivation. This is the hierarchy of Abraham Maslow's self-fulfillment needs, psychological needs, and the basic needs. The theory can be summarized as follows. First, human beings have wants and desires which influence their behavior. Only unsatisfied needs can influence behavior. Satisfied needs cannot. Since needs are many, they are arranged in order of importance from basic to the complex. Next, the person advances to the next level of needs only after the lower level need is at least minimally satisfied. And last, the farther the progress of the hierarchy, the more individuality, humanist, and psychological health a person will show. Let's proceed to the needs listed from basic. The most complex are as follows. In physiological, food, clothing, and shelter. In safety and security, home and family. In social, being in a community. In self-esteem, self-understanding, and self-acceptance. And self-actualization, recognition, and achievements. Herzberg's two-factor theory is another need theory of motivation. Frederick Herzberg's two-factor theory concludes that certain factors in the workplace result in job satisfaction while others do not, but if absent lead to dissatisfaction. He distinguishes between motivators and hygiene factors. In motivators, achievements, recognition, the work itself, responsibility, advancement, and growth. In hygiene factors, company policies, self-provision, relationships, work conditions, remuneration, salary, and security. Motivators, example, challenging work, recognition, responsibility, which gives positive satisfaction, and in hygiene factor, example, status, job security, salary, and branch benefits, which do not motivate if present, but if absent, will result in demotivation. The name hygiene factors is used because, like hygiene, the presence will make you healthier, but absence can cause health deterioration. The theory is sometimes called the motivator hygiene theory. Clayton Alderfer expanded Maslow's hierarchy of needs, leading to his ERG theory or existent relatedness and growth. Physiological and safety, the lower needs are placed in the existence category, while well love and self-esteem needs in the relatedness category. The growth category contains the self-actualization and self-esteem needs. Alder first ERG theory or existence relatedness and growth. Motivation is of particular interest to educational psychologists because of the crucial role it plays in student learning. However, the specific kind of motivation that is studied in the specialized setting of education differ qualitatively from the more general forms of motivation studied in the psychologists in other fields. Motivation in education can have several effects on how students learn and their behavior towards subject matter. On road 2003, so it can direct behavior towards particular goals, lead to increased effort and energy, increased initiation of and persistent in activities, enhanced cognitive processing, 
determine what consequences are reinforcing and lead to improved performance. Because students are not always motivated, they are sometimes need situated motivation, which is found in environmental condition that the teacher creates. So, there are two kinds of motivation. First, intrinsic motivation and second, extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation. Of course, when people are internally motivated to do something because it either brings them pleasure, they think it is important or they feel that what they are learning is morally significant. Extrinsic motivation come into play when student is compelled to do something or act a certain way because of external factor to her or him, like money or good grades. Now, let's proceed self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is an impression that one is capable of performing a certain task in a certain manner or attaining certain goals. It is a belief that one has the capabilities to execute the courses of action required to manage prospective situations, unlike efficacy, which is the power to produce an effect. Self-efficacy is the belief that one has the power to produce that effect. It is important here to understand the distinction between self-esteem, self-efficacy, and self-concept. Self-esteem relates to a person's sense of worth, whereas self-efficacy relates to a person's perception of her or his ability to reach a goal. Self-concept refer to the overall idea of who a person thinks he or she is. The interconnections of the three concepts, self-concept, self-esteem, and self-efficacy. Judgment about our self-efficacy influences our self-esteem, which influences our self-concept. The following example also illustrates these interconnections. Pedro did a good job on his first college speech. During a meeting with his professor, Pedro indicates that he is confident going into the next speech and thinks he will do well. This is an indication that Pedro has a high level of self-efficacy related to public speaking. The praises from his classmates and professor will reinforce his self-efficacy and lead him to positively evaluate his speaking skills, which will contribute to his self-esteem. Pedro likely thinks of himself as a good public speaker, which may then become an important part of his self-concept. 